Good morning. Welcome to worship with Grace United Church in person, online with our Zoom call, and on YouTube. Now, here we pride ourselves on being an inclusive intergenerational community partner invested in the faithful witness of God's love made known through Jesus Christ. We have a special focus of affirmation and advocacy for those who identify as 2SLGBTQ+, not just for Pride Month, but to, in some way to atone for the historical church's oppression of this community and to represent an alternative expression of Christianity that celebrates and welcomes this fullness and diversity of our being human. My name is Kenji Marui, I use he, him pronouns, and I'm part of the pastoral team here that extends its ministry into Sarnia, Lambton, and beyond. This morning, Ian Adamson leads our singing, Bob Newman is our scripture reader, uh, Eli Watson is our AV technician, and I want to also give thanks to Ben, who's helping out there. Glenn Parsons is our music director, if only for a few more weeks before he moves to Victoria, B.C., to help with the search committee uh, to fill the uh, upcoming vacancy, please respond to an online survey about the music needs of our church. That link was sent out in our weekly email blast. Uh, there are paper copies uh, available in the narthex uh, in the lobby. So if you could help with the team that way, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we, I don't know if you were checking uh, through, throughout the week, you, uh, an email announcement was uh, sent out asking if anybody knew of someone who might be available for custodial coverage while Curtis is uh, taking a few weeks holidays this summer. So uh, please speak to the property uh, committee about uh, duties and uh, details about what that would involve. <laughs> This Sunday is the Festival of Pentecost. Uh, we are celebrating it with the Sacrament of Communion. Uh, you were invited to bring your own elements, your own bread and juice. We also had rice crackers and uh, cranberry juice available for you as you came in. So uh, if, uh, please make sure that uh, you have that uh, ready and, and handy, uh, close at hand when we get to that point in the service. Also, uh, as has been a, a tradition here with Grace, uh, a second offering is uh, taken up on Communion Sundays for the Benevolent Fund. Uh, another uh, offering plate has been set up at the back of, uh, uh, in the narthex in the lobby. So if you could support the Benevolent Fund uh, uh, this Sunday or afterwards if you forgot, uh, we'd be, uh, the Congregational Care and Growth Committee would be very uh, grateful for that. Uh, Diversity Ed is running a QT camp in August. That is a, a camp with programs specifically for 2S LGBTQ plus kids that will be held at Lambton Center. And this camp is in need of some funding in order for it to take place. Now, while we don't have uh, actual soup or a speaker lined up for today, we are asking if you might consider making a donation for this worthy cause. Unfortunately, um, we are unable to provide charitable receipts through grace um, for this, but uh, if it's a cause that speaks to your heart, uh, we, we would ask that you would um, give. Any checks can be made payable to Diversity Ed with QT Camp uh, in the memo line. So thanks in advance for your support and, uh, and ongoing work in our mission and ministry uh, for uh, causes such as this. Later this morning, when we hear the scripture reading of all the nations represented in Jerusalem on the day that the Holy Spirit visited upon the gathered faithful, let us remember how the sharing of language enabled the coming together of heritage and history that otherwise keeps people apart. The Holy Spirit enabled cultures to meet with open communication and understanding to form what would become the church. We pray for that same spirit to bring together settler and arriving peoples with indigenous nations as we all share common space and seek to overcome one-sided treaty agreements, social inequality, and racism. We hope to build respectful relations that honor one another and the one who created us. And not just for June being National Indigenous History Month, but for every moment and every movement of our living.
You, some of you may have noted that I'm, I'm a little hobbled this morning. I, um, went, I thought I was um, doing a good thing and, and going for a run uh, Monday morning, and I, would, I was about as far away as I could get from home when I went over on my ankle, like my full weight came down. And so uh, I'm bruised up pretty nice, but uh, I'm able to bear weight and I'm able to be here with you. Uh, I, I won't be running around nearly as much as I might usually be doing this Sunday, but uh, that's just, uh, some of you have wondered and expressed concern, so that's what's going on. Uh, I should be back, uh, hopefully before too long, back to uh, full strength and full speed. Well, the table is set, and, and lighting a candle feels kind of fancy, doesn't it, for dinner? Makes it a special meal, makes it an occasion to celebrate. And we celebrate this chance to worship together, to feast at the communion table as we light a candle here now. And I invite anyone who is online uh, to do the same if you happen to have a candle handy and nearby. Although we are separated in space and in time, the common experience of activating light and energy, flame and heat and warmth, bridges our distance. Now this red candle here is twinned with one given to my uh, co-minister Pat Morrison, currently on his last month of sabbatical, reading and studying, finding renewal and restoration. So whenever we light our candle here, we send our prayers and our blessings and our care and our encouragement to Him. And when He lights His candle, He does the same for us. And the countdown is on. This month, next time, uh, next, yeah, next month at this time, He's back on the clock. Now, as Glenn brings us into the first moments of worship, let us open ourselves to the Holy Spirit, come to us as the voice of our conscience, the nudging of an idea as a burning fire, as stillness and silence nestled from within and raining down from above.
vibrant God, alive God, God of visions and dreams, God of intimacy, God of sustaining connections, God of bird song and whale song, God of dance, laughter, art, and play. Pour your spirit of life upon us that in our gathering we might live the joy of holy relationship. And let us sing. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we are not ready for you, but we know that you are ready for us, ready to change our lives if we will let you. Help us prepare by setting our hearts on fire with love, by blowing away our fears and doubts, by tuning our ears to the rich diversity of language and culture around the world, by opening our eyes to the amazing beauty and power of your creation, by breathing into us the joy and hope of the resurrected Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Now, as a, as a prelude to our, our passing of the peace, um, I want us to uh, spend a little bit of time, and I want to remind us of a new creed of the United Church of Canada. I know that uh, Pat has, with some of his uh, youth ministry friends, developed actions uh, to the new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, 
to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in the life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. So that, that's the new creed. That's, that's words of our faith, of our profession. Uh, it, it speaks of, um, of, of this peace that we wish one another. It points us in that direction. Uh, so I'll give you some time to turn to the people nearby. Introduce yourself as uh, you need to and catch up on your news. Um, wish each other this peace of Christ that is beyond any understanding, any measure, any comprehension. And if you need a little uh, prompt for, the, uh, for, for conversation, if you're not a small talker, you need something to kind of focus the conversation. Uh, is there, was there a line in the new creed that was particularly meaningful for you? Something in there that just stuck with you, caught your attention. Maybe it's an old favorite line. Maybe it's something you noticed for the first time. But uh, I'll give you a few uh, minutes uh, to do that. But uh, I, I do wish you the peace of Christ be with you. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come.
Our scripture lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. Reading from the message paraphrased version of the Bible. Listen for the inspired words of God. When the Feast of the Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard one after another their own mother tongues being spoken, they were blown away. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head nor tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked, they're drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions. Your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous, and whoever calls out for help to me, God will be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be for this living word. Let us pray. Holy God, we give thanks for the mystery and the miracle that we are able to communicate by piecing sounds together, that we can scribble shapes and have them mean something important, that we can communicate with one another through these means, and that we might use our voices and our words to tell the story of your great love, of a love that accepts and embraces and welcomes each and every one of us as we are. This morning we ask that the prayers that we pray and the songs that we sing, the words that we say and hear, be blessed by you, O God, our strength, our refuge, and our Redeemer. Amen. We are not alone. In certain contexts, those words are eerie and ominous. Like in a haunted house horror movie, we are not alone prepares us for a jump scare. Or science fiction search for alien life, we are not alone, prepares us for gigantic spaceships casting giant great shadows over Washington, D.C., Moscow, and other cities of strategic importance. For those of us well-versed in the United Church, we are not alone, is our creed and ready reference of reassurance. These words attend God's accompanying and attentive love and care and attention. These words point to the power of people gathered in community, committed to the flourishing of others through collective belief, action, and advocacy. These words announce the arrival of our theology in plain and poetic language. 
These are the first words of the new creed of the United Church. We are not alone. They almost weren't. Leading up to 1968, the year that the new creed was approved and adopted by the church, the powers that be were paying close attention to the exact wording of this important and influential statement. We are not alone presented a low-grade controversy at the time. Grammarians criticized the negative statement. One does not begin a creedal profession of who we are by stating what we are not. Creeds are supposed to be clear, direct, and powerful declarations of purpose and intent. Outlining what we are not invites fuzziness and muddiness by speaking in opposites. Yet the unorthodox wording remained and has become a call and response invoking the presence of God's world, of life beyond death, and of care and comfort in cosmic companionship and communal uh, connection. We are not alone is the prevailing message and theme presented in the Pentecost scripture reading. The gauntlet of pronunciation isn't intended to trip up scripture readers centuries later, but this listing of countries and cultures was to prove the full extent of the Holy Spirit's reach. Nowhere on earth was exempt or excluded from the power and presence of God's love. Pentecost created a connection of every nation on earth, binding all together through language and understanding of God's mighty works, translated and interpreted into relatable and comprehensible good news, no matter the disparate and diverse language barrier. I think the Holy Spirit arrives not because it was Pentecost, a Jewish festival of thanksgiving 50 days after the Passover. The particular date is an accessory detail. I think the Holy Spirit arrives because the faithful in Christ were all gathered together, the apostles and disciples, all of them in one spot. Yes, they were there for Pentecost, because of Pentecost, but the Spirit would have arrived if it had been Pride Fest at Sun Agora Park, or Amgenong Pow Wow celebration at Bear Park, or Blue Water Border Fest at Centennial Park, or Glenn's going away gathering in a couple weeks' time after church here, not a park. But nothing summons the Spirit more than people gathered together. And we gather here with family life stories that began in Japan, the Netherlands, Northern Ireland, Scotland, England, Wales, and Australia. Speaking in German, Dutch, French, and English, or as is the case for my, lang my love language, speaking in sarcasm. But for all of this diversity, we confess that entire continents and cultures are not represented. The work of the Spirit is not finished. There is yet more to do. Facing the immensity of this task, we are not alone. When Peter stands up to the skeptical and sneering crowd on that day of Pentecost, he is not alone. The verse explains that Peter was backed up by the other 11. When he tried, unconvincingly in my mind, to explain that there was no way that they could be drunk because it was only nine in the morning, he was not alone. He had the others with him. Peter may have been the mouthpiece for the group, quoting the prophecy from Joel, but he did so with the full backing of them all. He was not alone. We are not alone. We have the Spirit descended upon our descendants and eternally present within, an internalized conscience oriented toward faith and right living. Our ongoing legacy is this assembly of people bringing personality and perspectives, life experience and history of this place and other places that shaped our being. If you could go to the next slide, please. Collectively, we have gathered here from many different settings and starting spots with advance apologies for mispronunciation. You can see the, uh, the blue spots on the map showing where we have come from, places we have named as birthplaces. Places like Petrolia and Peterborough, Bearsden, Brigden, Burden Cove, 
coming from communities called Kitchener, Kincardine, Kirkland Lake, Kilworth, Quebec City, King City, King's Town upon Hull, hailing from hometowns of Haleybury, Holywood, Hamilton, resided in Regina, matriculated in the metropolis of Montreal, time spent in the town of Tree Thomas, lived in locations like London, Liverpool, Yorkshire, grew up in Glasgow, Glace Bay, Thunder Bay, originated in Owen Sound, Welland, Weston, Winnipeg, natives of Norland and Nelson, families of Fullerton, smaller sites like Seaforth and Strathroy, cities like Sydney and Sarnia. Maybe Toronto isn't the center of the universe. Maybe I spoke too soon. We can leave that slide now. But those were the places that I had in the time of writing this. Additions that, we, additions that we must make to this list prove the earlier point that the work of the Spirit is not yet finished. We have yet a part to play, places yet to pronounce. Until all are assembled under the auspices of divine grace, we have more work to do. Week after week in worship, we have opportunities to explore and exalt in connections that we might experience, connected to the music, to the scripture, to the stories of others, to the time of prayer when something sparks, resonant and real. Sometimes the Spirit of God is able to bust into our awareness despite all of our efforts to try and box her in and contain her within the bounds of a single hour on a Sunday morning. And we are brought together by the living bread and the cup of blessing given us by Christ, united in an understanding that suffering and death gives way to the resurrection and to new life, that bounty and abundance is the intention and instruction of God's way that grace is a gift given freely for our flourishing of good new excuse me of good news that is incredible and inevitable we are not alone we live in god's world in life in death in life beyond death god is with us in the spirit in one another thanks be to god let us pray Loving Spirit, who pushes us into the world with tongues of flame, who blows us into unexpected places with the sound of a mighty wind, our hearts are burning with hope and with past harms. You moved within the hearts of those who came before us, daring them to change and to grow, strengthening them to risk the new things that are now our traditions. We give you thanks for their witness to your inspiration. We give you thanks for your presence among us as our inspiration to risk. Daunting though it may be, we offer ourselves to you in silent thanksgiving. O oh God, who makes all winds that blow, may your living word in Jesus the Christ be our guide. Move us to become change agents enlivening us to grow in new ways of witness in how we live. May we continue to witness the connections tying us one to each other, leading us to foster deeper relationships with those around us, whether they seem to be friend or foe. In the spirit of all our relations, we lift to you in silence those for whom we pray and all those you call us to love and cherish. Receive the prayers that we make for those in our hearts and on our minds as we pray for Marilyn. And as we make our silent prayers, holy winds of excitement, May the prayers we offer, the gifts we share today and throughout this week nudge us to dream your dreams. Bless all that we give of, our, of ourselves in prayer, in worship, in time, in talent, in treasure for the work of this, your church, for the work of we, your people. May our giving inspire us to embrace your visions for our world, enliven our souls to create your realm of justice and peace on earth. Bless us as you journey with us into healing and wholeness, risen Christ. 
Bless us as you inspire us with passion and with daring, flaming spirit. Bless us as you shower us with grace and with faith, living God. Amen. From this place, may winds of creativity stir our imagination. May passion for living breeze through our closed doors. May play and intimacy unfold within us vibrant wisdom. For the kingdom of God is made by the wild and wily. So let us dance our way towards transformation. Through the Spirit's work, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen.